many set down their digital cameras what the rise in demand for 35 millimeter means for Kodak. Plus, the state's new plan to combat catalytic converter thefts. And the saving grace that kept a massive fire from destroying more of this Rochester neighborhood. We've got some colder air working in. That means some elevation snow in the Bristol Hills South. Higher elevations could see a smattering. We'll have that forecast coming up. From your breaking news and weather authority on Fox Rochester, this is 13 Wham News at 10. An old technology is making a comeback, driving new jobs in Rochester. We know we need to make more film. There's a strong demand and they, the shelves are kind of empty. And so we need to make more. From film to digital and back again, Kodak is hiring hundreds to keep up with a new demand for 35 millimeter film. Good evening, I'm Dan Schrack. Doug has the night off. The resurgence is being driven by photo enthusiasts looking to scratch an old school itch. As 13 Wham's Carla Rogner reports, it's led to a lot of new jobs. Carla? Yeah, that's right, Dan. Kodak has hired more than 350 people since the start of last year to keep up with the demand for 35 millimeter film, and it's still looking to hire more. About hundreds of these jobs are brand new. For Mark Whitman, there's something special about shooting on film. And it does kind of have a, if done correctly, can have a real beautiful look that digital has a hard time emulating. The photographer takes his camera around the world and uses 35 millimeter film to take pictures like these. It does make you slow down a little bit. It sounds like a cliche, but it allows you to slow down. Your parameters are kind of more set uh, and it kind of makes you think about that next shot a little bit more uh, than with digital. So I like that aspect of it. Whitman works at Scott's Photo in Rochester and says in the last few years, it's been hard to keep film on the store shelves. We have a lot of shooters uh, ranging from 16 to 60 that are going back to film or have never left film. And we see them every day come through the store, so it's, it's great to see. In recent years, Kodak has quadrupled its production to keep up with the demand. A few years ago, we ran our film finishing factory 40 hours a week. Now we're 24 seven, so we have increased our capacity 4X to meet the demand and we still haven't caught up with the demand of film. It's good news for the company that was once the leading force in Rochester's economy, but struggled when digital technology began to take over. It's really gratifying to see uh, the demand has been much stronger than we expected. So it's a good surprise for us. Uh, but we have always invested in film. Uh, we're continuing to invest in film and will manufacture film as long as there's a demand for it. And good news for photographers like Mark, who take pride in the classic technology. And Kodak says it's been chasing the demand for film for about three years now, and that demand continues to get stronger. Right now, Kodak still has about 75 open positions it's looking to fill. In the newsroom, I'm Carla Rogner. All right, thank you for that, Carla. New tonight, the Monroe County Sheriff's Office says UPS was one of the latest targets for catalytic converter thefts. Five were stolen from the Lehigh Station facility just last week. The Sheriff's Office says the most recent report of stolen catalytic converters happened overnight between the 11th and 12th of this month. Deputies say an unknown suspect cut the converters off of five rented box trucks. An investigation there is ongoing. Meantime, Governor Kathy Hochul signed legislation today to help curb that growing issue. It calls for better record keeping of purchases and sale of catalytic converters at places like scrapyards. Fouling to comply will lead to a misdemeanor and possible fines. Today we signed legislation to put the onus on the shops, the dismantling facilities where people might be likely to sell these to, that they have a responsibility to track and let us know who these people are. Most people do not have a used catalytic converter uh, happen to be in their house. It's often a stolen item. So they can be part of the solution to the problem. We look forward to working with them. In addition, new motor vehicle dealers and other qualified dealers will be required to stock catalytic converter etching kits to put a unique serial number on the components so they can be tracked if they are in fact stolen. It's actually a pretty quiet and uh, mainly clear evening over western New York, but there are some rain showers 
not too far away. Let's show you where they are now here on satellite and radar. So the reason we're dry right now is that the wind direction is out of the south-southwest, out ahead of this uh, area of low pressure. Once that swings off to the east, that'll change the direction around our area a little bit. So you can see where all the showers are. They're well off to the west and not much expected here in the next little while. And also always interesting to note over in western Wyoming County. All that right there, you see that near Sheldon? Those are wind turbines. That is not actual precipitation. It always looks like it's doing something in western Wyoming County, but that's just uh, just some bouncing back from those wind turbines in that county. All right, so overnight tonight, not a lot going on, maybe a few spot showers. And then through the day tomorrow, there'll be a better chance of occasional downpours. Hour by hour overnight, we are seeing the temperatures fall back to the upper 30s. More on where there may be a little itty bit of snow tomorrow and tomorrow night coming up in a few minutes. All right, Scott, thank you. A missing parent and woman was found dead in Rochester last night. Police say the body of 35-year-old Tracy Belanca was found on Ravine Avenue. She was reported missing yesterday after not being seen for two days. The cause of her death remains under investigation. Authorities say, though, there are no obvious signs of trauma. The case of a murdered Chai Lai teen, that's Brittany Drexel, will move forward this week. Raymond Moody, you see him there. Her accused killer is due in a South Carolina court on Wednesday. Drexel disappeared during spring break in Myrtle Beach in 2009. It would be years before Moody would be charged with her kidnapping, rape, and murder. 13 Wham! will bring you the latest updates from Wednesday's court appearance. New and potentially damaging allegations against a former elementary school principal. Kirk Ashton is on trial, accused of sexually abusing 26 students. Today, new testimony in court with witnesses for the prosecution taking the stand. A boy claims Ashton would touch him on his stomach, belly button and back. Also, a boy testified a teacher was in the classroom when Ashton touched some of his classmates. Ashton was arrested last year and later resigned from Northwood Elementary School in Hilton, where he'd been principal for 17 years. A TikTok video out of Wayne County is causing some controversy tonight. County management tells 13 Wham the video shows individuals simulating an airway procedure on a training mannequin. The county says the actions and comments are in no way approved by officials and do not in indicate the competent life-saving care provided by paramedics. The county says the incident is under investigation. Now to the latest on a massive fire leaving parts of one Rochester neighborhood in ruin. It took multiple fire crews hours to put out the flames at this four-alarm inferno. Plumes of smoke could be seen miles away. Chase Howell has more on how the community is picking up the pieces tonight. And you see that silver wall there? We were the bay just next to it. So you see that brand, I don't even know what it is, that piece of wood sticking out that way? That was us. Ellen Brenner Batelier for the first time in daylight is seeing the damage caused by a four alarm fire that ripped through this warehouse on Layton Avenue Sunday night. It's it numbing. Numbing. Can we go with that one? Yeah, numbing. Brenner Batelier had a 3,000 square foot storage room at the facility filled with equipment from both her companies, Fleet Feet and Yellow Jacket Racing. Now the only thing left is ash and debris. This sadly happens and it could have been worse and it wasn't, thank God. Lisa Sullivan lives less than a block away from the warehouse. It was pretty scary. The heat was intense from it and we were across the street from it, so like right at this corner, and it was very intense. This is what's left of the 55,000 square foot warehouse after 18 city companies responded to the four alarm fire. Captain David Abdosh with RFD says if it wasn't for the firewall, the damage would have been much worse. This building takes up pretty much this whole block. Right. And if this if that firewall wasn't able to stop it, along with the rest of the firefighters on here getting water where it needs to be, we probably would have had a whole city block empty right now. For Brenner Batelier, she says she's going to take what happened and treat it like a marathon and keep on pushing. When something bad happens, oftentimes your brain might go, I'm going to stop or I can't do this. I cannot handle this. But the truth of the matter is you can. And in our case, we will and we will. Reporting, Chase Howell, 13 WM News at 10 on Fox Rochester. 
Overseas tonight, the war in Ukraine shows no signs of slowing. Take a look at this video from earlier today. Here we go. This, at least four people were killed today in Kyiv when a drone hit an apartment building there. Incredible video here shows police actually trying to shoot down kamikaze drones overhead. Now, according to Ukrainian authority, Kyiv's energy infrastructure was the target, but one hit a residential building with devastating results, and that result was four deaths. Meantime, four people were killed right here when a Russian warplane crashed into a port city. This is video of the fireball, the aftermath of that bomber when it went down, the crash engulfing a high-rise apartment building. You see it right there, those flames sky high. The defense ministry says the two crew members ejected safely and that it had been part of a training mission. More than two dozen others were injured. Now, this crash marks the 10th reported non-combat crash of a Russian warplane since that invasion overseas began. And tonight, new satellite images out of Iran following a prison fire there, a deadly prison fire at that. Iran state media says at least eight prisoners were killed, 61 others injured. Those deaths, so caused by smoke inhalation. Still ahead tonight at 10 on Fox Rochester, after more than a year of terror out west, the arrest, police say, will close at least six murder cases. And later, the community is weighing in as the state gets closer to opening its first cannabis shops and lounges.